Hi, and blessings to you and your family during these troubling times for our world. But I wanted to tell you before we get to our Fisto character today that we're reviewing is that I'm adding a new segment to the Super Dave reviews. And it will be before we get to the steel pictures at the end. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be worth you checking out. So stay tuned. Super Dave here for another review. Hello, and Super Dave here with another exciting review as we'll be looking at Super 7's Masters of the Universe Classics Club Grayskull Filmation Fisto. And this is going to be an exciting one. Can't wait to review this one. Let's check him out. First of all, he comes came in this traditional brown mailer box. And then in the Club Grayskull type packaging, which is really nice, you have that slip cup cover of the drawbridge of Castle Grayskull and then when you open that it reveals oh there's a lot of suction <laughs> you reveal the um, character within and what a what a action figure to behold looking great inside of there check him out in this nice packaging with the windows on the sides and of course those eyes of Castle Grayskull on the top where you can look down in there the bottom and then check out that filmation accurate artwork on the back very nice very cool very exciting to check out this this character he had a lot of different looks from the different cartoons from filmation cartoon to uh, the comic books to the mini comics and even the mike young 2000 and x series so let's check him out and then first let's look at his bio here pause the video if you'd like to read that so let's break him open and check him out. We'll be right back. All right, here's our figure out of the package and he's looking amazing. He's looking really stellar. He's looking great. Now his name is Fisto, but he's also known as Malcolm. That's his original name. And Malcolm is the older brother to Duncan. And of course, Duncan is man at arms. And uh, Malcolm in his youth served King Myro at the start of the Great Unrest until he was wounded and struck with amnesia somehow. Now here's where we get a little off track with some of the stories that mix from mini comics to filmation story to classics story to uh, some of the comic book stories. At some point Malcolm served Skeletor. So uh, don't know exactly when that is. May have been during this time of amnesia that he worked for evil. But according to his bio, if you read it on the back, it said he already had his fist, his iron fist, when he was serving Skeletor. Well, when he had amnesia and was thought dead and was wandering the wilderness, he didn't have the iron fist yet, according to the bio. So you're going to have to kind of fit these things in a little bit. But many years later, after he was wandering the wilderness or serving Skeletor, <laughs> then he came upon a, a mining settlement in the Mystic Mountains. Many years later, his brother, now the man-at-arms, discovered him during the Snake Men attack. Now, despite being ashamed of some of the things that he had done in his past, Malcolm helped save the Masters of the Universe from the Snake Men and shattered his right hand in the process. Bingo! That's where he hurt his hand. He had a normal hand until that happened. First of all, Randor pardoned him of his past crimes and he served the Masters and Man-at-Arms built him a robotic right arm and fist thus becoming known as Fisto and so that's how he got that name uh, and he is as strong as He-Man he has the strength of He-Man and then he can wield a lot of damage with that iron fist so it's just amazing what you find there about this guy so he's uh, he's got red hair he's known somewhat to have somewhat of a temper he's also very loyal he was known in the mini comics as being very reliable and some other details that the Mike Young production Masters of the Universe cartoon in 2000 through 2002 did in the 2008 version. So there's just a lot to this character. You kind of have to look in his bios and and kind of dig out and piece it together. I'm thinking in my mind that right after Man at Arms helped him with his fist, he then somehow got tangled up with Skeletor. But at some point, whenever this dude did help Skeletor, the Masters helped bring him 
they helped to bring him over to the good side and serve the masters. And so it says in your bio there that he became famously loyal and dependable, feeling that he owes a great debt to those that saved him from a lifetime of evil, serving evil Skeletor. So that's kind of a mix there and you kind of feel your way out. But anyway, that gives you an idea of this guy's bio. So really cool. Just look at the detail of this character. He looks really nice. The only accessory that he comes with is this purple matte finished painted sword. And there's no place to put it on his back there. And so that's the only accessory other than, of course, his fist, which comes with him. And we'll be looking more at that at the review booth. But we'll also be taking a look at his Classics counterpart, Fisto, Motu Classics version, that look you know, more realistic, more detailed, uh, and a little bit more in line with the mini comics version, as well as the Mike Young 2000X version. And so this is more the filmation, which is what it's supposed to be, the very simplistic, there's no ab crunch feature and different things like that, a very simplistic look on his buck and his face is, is very dead on. There's a picture of him in the filmation cartoon. You see it's dead on his face and look there, but this one's dead on for some of the mini comics looks as well as the Mike Young production 2008. So let's go over to review booth and check out Fisto's articulation and do some more comparisons to this guy and some other characters. Meet us over there at the review booth. All right, so let's get started with our review of Fisto. First of all, let's take a look at his articulation and his head, of course, will go back and forth. He's look at, able to look down about that much. He's able to look up, basically kind of like just upright, not really a looking up, but he kind of comes with a, a downward gaze. So um, he's kind of a tall character in the, uh, you know, or a giant of a kind of character, I guess we should say. They just look stellar. Just look at the details that they made to this face sculpt. Just the cheekbone, the mustache, the, the tones that are in the face. He's got a little bit of shine, but also some coloring there. So just, I think, an excellent, excellent job all around with this particular character, even with his hair, getting it close. Again, there's a look, look at him beside a picture of him in the Filmation cartoon. You see how close and how dead on it is in that face. It's just excellent job, the detail given there to, to make this a Filmation accurate action figure. So just really good there. All right, let's go on and look at the rest of the articulation. You see his arms can go up about that much. He can, of course, do a 360, has bicep swivel, has single jointed elbow, has bend and swivel at the wrist, no ab crunch, has a twist at the waist, has the ball joint at the pelvis, and thigh swivel there, of course a boot cut, and of course up and down with that foot, and excellent rocker joints that uh, were given with Fisto. And of course on his right hand, let's don't forget that there is an extra articulation, no hinge of course, but there is a twisting of that uh, fist, that iron fist of Fisto. So you see his articulation, other than the fist, is fairly standard with the exception of, well, what we see with some of the Filmation Club Grayskull figures, no ab crunch there. But there you have it as far as articulation. Now, just in comparison, we see that the Classics has a much different head sculpt. He has the ability to look up, down, side to side, some pivot, even a little bit of pivot. He does have ab crunch, but it's underneath this, but, but you can still get some motion. So see, he has this, this armor over the buck, which gives him a bulkier look, and he still has the ab crunch feature. Now, I understand why they did not do that for this Fisto because he's supposed to look more in build with this line. Now, with the exception of Man-at-Arms over here, now he did have an addition built on, but even this is very, it's not removable. It's very tightly fitted to him. It just didn't have the bulk of a lot of these classics, you know, armor and garments that would fit over the actual buck. In this case, it's molded in, molded on, or painted on. I think it's molded in, though, and that's that's fine. So, you know, that's the difference here that you have. But also, let's just look at some other differences. If you'll notice, now, on this uh, Fisto, the 
right arm is the same size as the left arm. But in the Classics version, the right arm being it has to ye uh, wield that humongous iron fist and arm, mechanical arm, is actually built up. See the veins popping there? I just think, I've always liked that. It was one of the main reasons I had to have this prize, this treasure of this fist toe instead of just waiting for this one. Because number one, I love this look, the 2000X look. I love the mini comics look. I love this shiny fist going on here, which is also able to twist and articulate as well. But also the fact that he has this just giant bicep. So you see the difference there. All right, so you see some of the comparisons, and on, the only other thing that uh, is different about these characters is the fact that this Fisto right here does not have the hinge wrists like we get with the Club Gray Skull, most of the Club Gray Skull, and even some of the more modern, even the William Stout collection had the, uh, the swivel and hinged wrists, so that's nice. Also, I would be amiss not to mention that this particular Fisto comes with this humongous nice sword which goes on a sheath on his back, back there, which is real a really nice touch. I love that about this figure. And look at the handle, the butt of that sword. It actually has the fist on the end of the handle. Isn't that so cool? I've always loved that about this Classics figure. So since I haven't ever done really a review of the Classics Fisto, I'm just kind of covering him more here in this comparison, as well as the fact that he came with an alternate head sculpt, which has the crown that goes along with the uh, Motu Classics and backstory, as well as the 2000X William Young Masters of the Universe cartoon. And then he also comes with the belt that he wore during that particular ep those episodes in the 2000X cartoons. And that's a really nice touch. Has a little potion, little money pouch, even a little book clamped to the side, which these are non-removable. But the belt uh, clip here will come loose so that you can get it around his waist, which is nice. So that is just really cool. So he comes with those swords. And he also came with kind of a... A sword I could not find it but he also comes with a sword kind of like this that's purple that has a metallic paint to it that he can hold in his hand who needs that when you have a sword of the caliber of like a Final Fantasy <laughs> sword Wow I mean tell me about it really right <laughs> so that is just so cool so let's do some comparisons right quick with some other figures that are in this line of uh, of backstory and first of all we have Jitsu here now Jitsu is Fisto's arch enemy they were in combat together in a championship and in that uh, fight Fisto won and crushed uh, Jitsu's right hand the bones in his right hand and thus he got made a, uh, a mechanical <laughs> chopping karate type you know mechanical metal right hand and uh, thus they became each other's nemesis so there's Jitsu and I do not have the filmation version I just like this one so good because he doesn't just have a big chopping flesh hand he's got that metal gauntlet type hand but you can certainly find other reviews of that Jitsu on YouTube so there's just a few there and of course we have you see some of our other figures in the line here that uh, let's go ahead and put man at arms with him you see how good they look together especially this uh, this new Fisto the filmation Fisto so those are brothers there together and uh, they look just they look very nice together that's really cool <laughs> so that's neat that's neat now as promised I want to add an addition to our reviews that's going to be something new that we've never done now you know Shardimus Prime has Sid who does review, which is basically Shardimus with a hat on, and I love that part of his thing. And that's not, I'm not trying to copy that. This is an idea that I got because this has been a part of my family for almost 10 years now. And so, without further ado, I want to introduce to you the uh, Two Tooth. Well, hello there. Testing one, two. Am I on? Hello? Yep, you're on, Mr. Two Tooth. Good. Now, wait a minute before we get into our 
review with Fisto. Now tell me, Mr. Two Tooth, how did you come into the Super Day family? Well, it was about 10 years ago, your daughter saw me in a seafood place in Myrtle Beach, and guess what? She had to have me, and we've been playing ever since. Well, kinda, because she's 14 now. She don't care about nothing but her phone. Nothing but her phone. But you know what? I don't even have fingers to do a phone. Hmm. But anyway, now here I am. Well, it's so good to have you join us as a guest today, Mr. Two Tooth. What do you think about Fisto over there? Well, there's uh, one, two, three of them. Nope, there's just two of them. One, two, right here. Okay, so which one's the clone? Well, it's not a clone. You have two different lines of Fisto. You have one from the Classics line that kind of goes along with the you know, mini comics and comic books and 2000X line. And then you have the one that kind of goes with the 1980 uh, Filmation cartoon series that's more plain there with the red hair. Well, that's interesting, but they do look pretty similar and they both got those huge metal fists. That's pretty cool. This one's shiny. Look at the guns on that guy. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't want to arm wrestle him. Well, Mr. Two Tooth needs to step back just a little bit. But anyway, now I'm safe. Yes, you're safe. They're all right. All right. So this guy was kind of drawn, you know. Drawn? What do you mean drawn? Well, he's kind of got the plain look like you would in a, you know, a drawn and then colored and then frame by frame kind of cartoon. Well, that's kind of dull. Why couldn't they just be puppets like me? <laughs> Well, because that was a different time, different day, and they didn't have cute computer animation. They had puppets, but that was Muppets, so that was a different franchise. But anyway, what, what rating do you give Fisto? I would give him a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10? Why, Mr. Tutu? Because 5 fists, fi uh, fist 5, uh, 5 fingers on a fist, I mean, you know, it makes sense. Well, I guess, but I think I would give him an 8 out of 10 because, you know, he's a pretty good action figure. I would like to have had ab crunch, even though I understand why they didn't. I'd like to have a little bit more uh, range of motion with his head. And I would... Hey, I got plenty of range of motion with my head. I can go up and down and left and right. I can do a split. I can, I can even chew. I can even lick. Okay, Mr. Two Tooth, calm down. And I would have liked for him to have had a little bit better paint apps or some slop on some little places. But overall, he's great, and I really like him. What do you think? I mean, you know, uh, Shard and Miss Prime always had Sid kind of come on and said, you know, leave him at the store or, you know, scream I love him or something like that. What, what, what would you get? You're talking about Shard and Miss Prime. Oh, I love watching Shard and Miss Prime, but Sid is my favorite part of that show. What do you mean? That's only like one second. Like I said, it's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> okay, Mr. Tutu, you need to get out of here. Thank you for joining us today. Give us a bow. All right, see you next time. Peace out, Mr. Tutu. <laughs> Have fun with your action figures, man. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Tooth Tooth sometimes gets a little bit eccentric and a little bit excited at times, but um, he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. Uh, I know what you're thinking. You're wondering if I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Okay, maybe we get a little cabin fever with all this, uh, you know, quarantine stuff and the songs and everything else that they're saying. But my family and I, we're trusting the Lord and we're taking one day at a time and we're praying for everybody. And I trust every one of you will be safe as well. Have fun. Like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell, and come back and see us next time on Super Dave's Reviews. And stay tuned for some actual steel pictures of this Fisto in action. Thank you for joining us. Anytime I can give you a hand, just let me know. And when Fisto offers you his hand, boy, that's a big offer.
by the power of Grayskull! Nothing's happening, dude. By the power of Grayskull! Still nothing. Come on, I'm supposed to be able to get some lightning or some around here. I'm supposed to get like a... I have the power chant going on here. By the power of Grayskull! Oh well. Doesn't work.